that game was hard to watch. I don't know about y'all. That was hard for me to watch. I thought that was ugly. Two horrible teams out there. Whew, for the Eagles, we'll start with them. They got the win, but it wasn't pretty. They lost to Sean Jackson. I was excited to see him out there. I missed him. You know, he was done talking about Hitler. He's focused on football, and I love watching him as a football player. And they lost the linemen. But you'd think, you know, despite of all the injuries, they got the win. So it would be looking good for them, even though they played a terrible team. I still can't say it looked good because I think it's good for the team as a whole that they made enough plays. But the worry is Carson Wentz, and he made some good plays. He still shows that he has a high-level talent. But he is too deep into his career to be making some of these throws. I don't. He didn't even used to make these throws. I don't know why he's doing it now. Maybe he just feels like he has to carry. But no, he just needs to throw it away when it's not there. The team's injured, but you're playing the Giants. You don't need to carry. Early in the game, he scrambles out of the pocket. And he just throws a high-arcing pass across the field. Like five yards past the line of scrimmage. Any good defender should have jumped on that and got the interception and ran it back to the house. But the Giants didn't take advantage of it. It was like in the defense's hand and the receiver's hands. More the receiver got closer to it and dropped it. It's just got, got to be incomplete. But really, one should have had three picks. He ended up with one. There was another one that got tipped and almost picked. It was ugly for him. He made a good, but he made a few really great throws, and he ended up with a lot of throwing yards because the Giants' defense is horrible, and he's a talented quarterback, and he can make some good throws. Fulgham, you know, dropped a couple balls, but he made some plays for him. Greg Ward and all that. And then you go over to the Giants. Daniel Jones. You got me questioning you. I mean, at this point we could tell, at least I could tell, I don't think there's a chance he's ever elite quarterback. At best, he's like this generation's like Eli Manning, where he can be like top 10 to 15, and hopefully for them he'll elevate if they get to the playoffs. But... Tripping over yourself when no one's around on your way to the end zone, that's a bad sign for me. I don't see Russell Wilson ever doing that. I don't see Lamar Jackson ever doing that. Okay, those, those are more running court. Nah, Daniel Jones is a really running court. He's not Lamar Jackson level, but I don't see Deshaun Watson ever doing that. It just seems like he's not built for it. You know, I know he's had his kind of clutch moments in the, in the little career he's had in the t- trash teams he's been on. Like, you know, his first career start it was against the Buccaneers and he had a rushing touchdown for the win so you know it's not all like no hope for him in the clutch but I don't trust him in a moment on a Thursday night game 80 yard run no one's near you and you just stumble and fall and that's ugly to see for the Giants you know I thought Jason Garrett did a pretty good job and you know getting that option play drawing up some different op- options you know some little receiver handoff stuff like that but I really it really had me thinking he shouldn't have taken this job how bad that offensive line is basically just how bad the offensive line is how bad the team is as a whole so you didn't have to take it this you could have just sat back on your couch like Mike McCarthy did after he left the Packers and for, for you I think people would be more interested because I've I've always been an advocate when Cowboys fans come to me came would start saying J.C. Garrett's terrible. He's our problem. I never thought he was a problem. You know, I don't think he's the best coach in the world, but I thought he was a decent head coach. He seemed like a professional guy. He was uh, like kind of he kind of no nonsense, but not in a like authoritarian way. Just in kind of you know professional. They go. You don't hear a lot of. You didn't hear like a lot of crazy stuff coming out of the Cowboys. It seems like they were fairly focused, and he seemed like he knew he was doing. At, calling plays and he's a former player I like all that stuff so I thought I think he's a decent coach and I think if he just didn't come to this horrible Giants team he'd be able to sit out this year and see look to these look at these Cowboys when I'm gone they had a winning record while I was there it was never this bad when I was there but he chose to come to this Giants team that is horrible as a quarterback Daniel Jones I think he'll be decent mediocre I don't think he's that good, but I think if you give him an offensive line, he could be pretty good. But really, they have no offensive line. The defense not good. The Eagles are just so injured, and Carson Wentz is just mistake-prone at this point. Just 
dumb-headed plays. <laughs> if they didn't win this game, I would have wanted to see Jalen Hurts. I still kind of want... I don't watch college football, so y'all let me know if we, I should want to see Jalen Hurts. I don't really know much about Jalen Hurts as a player. I see him in his little moments out here, and he looks good. But that's like my one weakness in terms of sports. I don't watch college football. I don't. I just don't know about these guys until they get the league, really. So I don't know what to expect, but there's moments. Like, until they got the game-winning touchdown, it was... <sighs> Carson Wentz should be done because of all the mistakes he made. But he did just enough to keep him... To get him to the win over this horrible team. And as bad as the Eagles look, they got the win with Carson Wentz making a few terrible throws. And they're, you got to figure they're going to start to get a little healthier and it'll turn around a little bit. All in all, this changes nothing about the NFC East being the worst division in NFL history. The Eagles... I think they're my favorite to win. <laughs> I think they're terrible. The worst four teams in the NFC are all in the NFC East, and you could argue the worst four teams in the league. I, my mind, I haven't thought it all the way through, but my mind just goes to the Jaguars, and I would give the Jaguars a chance to win this division. So I don't know, man. Let me know y'all thoughts in the comments about the game. Did y'all enjoy it more than me? Y'all have any thoughts about what y'all saw? <laughs> Any any new predictions for winning the NFC East? Catch y'all later. Let me know. Like and subscribe.